This video is going to show how to install the presser bar and needle bar and their parts. But first I have to clean some stragglers. Who is this tutorial for? It is for anybody who would like to gain an understanding of how, what, where, and for how long these pieces do it. Confusing, I know. I'm a YouTube vintage sewing machine fixer. The best learner learns a lot in the doing. For me, this is fun. I hope it is for all of us. Thank you for viewing. Please subscribe. Action time. Starting here, this is the hair dryer. We'll need that at the end of the washing and drying process. Here I have the already clean tension device. Here is the presser bar and its few parts. Over here is the presser bar lifter and the fork and its spring that reaches over to the tension device. So that's dirty. This is the needle bar and its screw and measurement device and linkage so it's dirty but this is all clean so it's going to be into the 100 percent dishwashing liquid then into a solution of dishwashing liquid and water and then a clear rinse and then over here we have the strainer and that's where i become the hair dryer guy again and I give you like one second of the hairdryer sound and then I shut the camera off for five minutes while I dry everything uh, in, the, in the strainer and then once I'm done drying it in the strainer I put it in this container with a clean dry shop towel and I give it a rub and rub and make sure that there's no moisture coming off on the towel. If I see any moisture coming off on the towel, then it's right back into the strainer with the, the hair dryer. After the drying, I'm going to put some uh, oil, lubricate uh, the pieces as uh, indicated, as required. And, uh, you know, now they're clean. So I will not be drowning them in oil. You know, if they were filthy, grimy, varnishy, grungy, grody parts out of, a, out of a train wreck machine, I'd be drowning them in that. But these are going to be clean, so all we're going to do is we're going to put on a minimum lubrication application necessary to, to avoid rust and varnish and all the, all the, all the baddies. I've noticed that the, the long-term experienced restorers in the trade, when they oil something and then they wipe all the oil off, so that, you know, their, their standard is that a well-oiled properly, not a well-oiled, but a properly oiled machine or part should show no trace of oil or lubrication. What I'm doing now is I'm taking this little brush, giving them the 100% treatment with uh, the soap and water. And I just want to see how this does, you know, by comparison to... Uh, to Craig Cutter, and because this is my next favorite, I will throw those in there. That one we'll just put in there because it won't fit in the first container. That'll fit. That'll fit. That'll fit. Very good. So I'll give these a some swirling action and brushing them down. And what I'm also going to do is get some water in here and then we'll let them bathe for a bit. But what I'm going to put in here now is crud cutter. Okay, so these parts have been in that container of oil for like half an hour or so. And what I've done is I've put a small pot of tap water on the burner and I'm heating up that water. And what I'm going to do is put all these parts in that heated tap water. So these guys just came right out of the pot of water. Okay, I'm back with you. And I got them all nice and dry, I think. Those aren't going to flash rust now. So now would be the time to give some of the part a very small drop of oil or a very light application of the oil. The next step is to oil the parts. So I would likely oil our friends playing paying specific attention. Any oil ports I see, like that one there, 
Absolutely. I'll put those linkages up there together with each other. I'll put the measuring device kind of beside the, the needle bar and the linkages. There's that set screw that goes in the back of goes in the back of here. Is that the screw? And I don't think it fits. I'm missing a screw. Right you are, Jeb. The needle bar clamp screw is missing. I took it out of there. I worked hard on it to get it out, so it was really frustrating to lose it. And the screw that belongs right in that place there, it was never in the machine. All right, I've got this all nicely lubricated. I want to try and line it up so it's going in okay. And then while I have that one out, I might as well give it another oiling. There, get that to go in there and seat and clean things up. I think it's going in nice and straight. Here are the parts here for today's job. There's the, the fork. This spring has to go on right here. And then that's the screw that's going to attach it to the sewing machine. And the screw that belongs right in that place there, it was never in the machine. The other thing of note is that this set screw that was on this end of the needle bar clamp, it never was here. So we're missing two proprietary individual set screws because they're not the same set screw. I tried using the set screw. This is the other set screw for the device. And that goes in, I think it goes somewhere up in here. Well, up in the sewing machine, up near the counterweight. And the other thing I want to point out is that this is the position that the needle bar has to be in when you put this on, right? Because it has to be, it has to be like that. Because once everything is put together, this is like that. So. That's the position it has to be in. Here's the needle bar uh, measuring device. So, and that goes on the bushing or on the sewing machine. It, that was the three important things that I wanted to say. That the set screw for the needle bar clamp has been lost. And then this screw never was present in the machine. Somebody took that screw out before. But anyway, what I'm going to do is just uh, put this, this is easy to put together. See, and then here's this screw, which is a reverse threaded screw. It's, uh, it's not a loosey-lefty. If you turn it left, it tightens. And it's not ready to tighten. You can turn it right, it loosens. So I have to figure out what that uh, that is doing. That's accounted for. That we know goes up there. And then, like I said, that is roughly the position of how it looks once it's in the machine. But before we do the, put it in the machine, we're going to get the presser bar and its stuff, uh, in particular the, the, the presser bar lever and its uh, couple of parts, and get that installed. Okay. The pin goes in. The flat end stays at this end. The pin end there. I think that's right there. That's the way I want it, like that. And then I get the two opposing discs and the thread guard. they go on like that. Then we take the plus minus indicator and it goes on like that. It looks like it's backwards but it's not. That's correct. Then we get the beehive spring. Then we get the lock washer with the tab, 
the bent tab facing the viewer. That'll be facing me like that. Then we take the number dial. I put the zero up there. Then we have to depress the number dial. And this has a stud on it. That stud goes into the number dial. <laughs> it can be clumsy at times. It can be. So there, it's together. And I'll get that on. Okay, we're ready to install. So, I'll get it in. There. There, now I just want to give it a little tap with something kind of gently heavy. And we're in there. We'll get a screwdriver. There, we're good there. That's nice and snug. I'm happy with that. How about you guys? Are you having fun yet? Okay. I want to knock that out again. And I want to, you know, I realize it's supposed to be taut, but it, it, it's really, really tight. So I just do want to get it out one more time. But I can feel it. Uh, yeah, oh, there. It fell right out. And what I'm going to do is I am going to oil that. Let's do it a couple little drops like that. Wash it around. Get a shop towel. I need to have this flat piece on this side here because there's a set screw that goes in there. I've got this lined up now with the presser lifter arm there. I've got the screw there and I just want to get a grip on that thread with the screw because we have another piece, another part. There, that's it. And the other part we want there's my spring which we're not going to put in right now this is the other part i want but i think in order to use that part i have to have the pressure bar so let me put that in there just to line everything up. So, okay. Now I'm just going to tighten that. Not, you know, just finger tight. Thread tight. So that the bar can't slip right through here independently. And I think I got it pretty much there. <laughs> there, we're good. <laughs> it's back together, man. <laughs> That's kind of cool the way that worked. So, I think I'm going to tighten that one down there for now. But it is a difficult first time event, which it is for me. I've never done this before. You guys ever done this before? <laughs> so, anyway, where did I lose the screw this time? Great, now I can't even find it. Or is there? Okay, so now we're lined up. We're still lined up pretty good. This thing has to sit here, and the spring has to be able to contact something coming through there, like that. So that's where this thing has to be. Is right there and the spring is going to go there and against there so so I'm kind of lined up for that okay to get the screw head in there oh I think I got it now I want to get that spring on there before things get too cozy and it's a hard spring to, to get on so I may leave that like that for now and get the presser arm on so here's a set screw to tighten the stud pin the tension 
it's a long it's a long screw and I guess it travels a long way but it is nice and clean and oiled in there now and that's as tight as I can get it just hand tightening and that's all I need because it's really not a dynamic part it's a static part it's still it's not moving and it's tight so we're good to put the rest of the assembly unit together what I did here is I put some red nail polish on there to mark the flat spot on that stud. The flat spot that I would like to mar match up with that set screw. And this is a little tool or trick that we learned when we were meshing gears on the, on the hook gear stud and the driving hook shaft and all that. So that's where that comes from. This is another one down here that has a flat spot. And the flat spot has to be towards here. Once you get this secured, I'm going to turn that so that it comes up to this hole over here, this access hole over here, and that's where we'll tighten the set screw that's down there on the side where my thumb and pointer are to tighten that up. And I'm looking to feel if it seats or sets, and I'm watching that nail polish. I'm going to have to use a smaller screwdriver bit. Where's my little... Oh, here's a smaller one. Here's a smaller one. Well, I like this one because it's longer. And what I'm doing is I'm watching there to see if that met that nail polish moves. I didn't see it move, so I think my my approximations were right on. Pretty golly darn close. It is hard to tell, but this is a really great shot of the flat spot on that that stud. Now I did eventually get it, but I had to use grease and I put grease on the, the screw, the bottom of the screw where the threads start. When I did that, I didn't have the camera running. The rotation is smooth and trouble free it seems. The next thing I want to do is I want to connect the connecting link which is right now it's connected to the, um, to the needle bar. The other thing I want to do is, right now actually, I can put on this measuring device because it goes on. I'm going to put one more little drop of oil on there first. There. Beautiful. And the more centered it is, the better off I will be. Nice. This screw is a reverse threaded screw. That means it's not righty tighty, it's righty loosey. And it's not lefty loosey, it's lefty tighty. And there it is, it's out. So anyway, now I want to get the connecting link. What I have to do is I have to get the needle bar in here. And that can be a little bit of a challenge, apparently. Yep. Let me put that down. Let me see if I can go in that way. I can. And this, that threaded hole for the, that's for the needle bar. It's, it's where the needle, <laughs> needle bar stuff goes on. So, okay, so we're in there. So we're going to bring it down. Beautiful. Look at that, right through the bushing, and it's going to have to be set afterwards, all this stuff is. Right now we're just, you know, remove, clean, install. And I'm going to put some oil in these little places just while I have them around, accessible. And there's the marks there, the two marks that we use for timing and uh, setting that. So I need to put that in there, like that. Beautiful. Then I'll take it right down to, to there, yes. Just like that. That can only go on one way. So let me see if I can get it on with that reverse threaded screw. To secure it. First I'll give it a some more even more oil. I want to give that a screw. 
scrub right now with a plastic brush. So that has to go like that. That has to be like that. I'm going to take it right down. I hope this went together correctly, man. It does look like it is. Okay, let's put that in right there like that. And I want to try and push that needle bar in there, but I'm not having any luck. Why is that? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Will you look at that, won't you? And that's facing the right way. See this flat edge has to be facing down. And there's our hole for the screw or whatever. So that's in good shape. Now I can get my reverse threaded screw. That's the spring, which I still have to deal with. Got the reverse threaded screw. and replace it. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty snug. I want to get this electrician screwdriver. It's got a bit of a wider blade. Yep, that's tight. Good. Well, I'm really proud of that. This is the first one, you know. Doesn't seem to be any aberrations. What I still have to do is get the, the spring in here, which is right there. Uh, the way that I got that set screw to finally seat, I gave up on the using vice grips and all sorts of supports and tools. You know what? I wish I had been filming it. It came down to using grease. I put grease on the end of the set screw that was going into the threads, and I put grease on the slot head on the top of the set screw where the screwdriver went in. And I put it in there and gave it three or four turns and it was seated. And so it went in there with grease on both ends. So it's well oiled because grease is time delay oil. To replace the presser bar, first I need to install this. And I find that's the easiest way is to take it to the top and slide it in there and then just set it in there. And then it's very simple. The next move is to take the, the presser bar and insert it through the this device and through the bushing and we'll take it right to about I'll just keep it the same as the needle bar for now 
but this will all be timed and set later. We're just finishing up on the remove, clean, and replace. And there, I gave that a little snug turn. Next, we're going to put the spring in. Oh, that is so nice and clean and smooth. Yes, indeed. And I'll just tighten that up. And I'm happy with that tension there. That's good for now. But anyway, that concludes the um, presser bar needle bar clean and replacement. This video and the video before have all been about this 201 and that area there. So I hope this is helpful to you. This was a great experience for the apprentice in me. I wish you well. I hope you guys stay safe, have fun. Please do subscribe. It will help this channel to keep producing.